Hello and welcome to my part two of my Tandy 1000 TX video. If you haven't watched part one, you should go ahead and do that first as this is a continuation of the work that I was doing on the machine. Link in the description to part one and let's get right into it. Before we get into what's going to happen with the machine here, I wanted to do a little bit of housekeeping from part one. In part one, I mentioned that the machine was part donation, part trade, the Tandy 1000 TX. And I forgot to mention who that came from. So my apologies to Ron from Ron's Computer Videos. I'll put a link to his channel down in the description. Over the last few months, Ron and I have been doing a lot of trading and donating back and forth to each other, hardware and some things like that. And this Tandy 1000 TX, was part of one of our many transactions that we've done. So yeah, Ron, I know you're watching, so hello, thank you again. And if you like Apple II content and a guy with a really great sense of humor, check out his channel. Again, the link is in the description. And now we're going to jump into my part two video. Let's do this. In part one, I was cleaning the machine, getting some things set up and tested. And on the keyboard, it was missing one of the cork feet, if you recall. And this is what the cork feet look like. This is actually the original one that was on the bottom. And I have since replaced both, but let me turn the keyboard over and show you that. Here is the keyboard. The original one was here. There was one missing here. And why I took the original one off and replaced it with new cork is because the stuff I used wasn't as thick as the original cork. So what I bought was this gasket kit right here and it comes with you know a bunch of different gasket stuff but one of them was cork. Let me pull that out here so there's no reflection. You can see here cork and you can see where I cut some out um, it'll show you the thickness. Here's the original one, and then here's the new cork. You can see the original one was a little bit thicker. Same exact pattern, looks really great, but I figured I would replace both feet, that way they were the same thickness. So that's why I did that, but I will hold on to the original foot just because I'm a nerd like that and I like to keep the original stuff. So yeah, if you're needing to uh, replace cork feet on a machine, uh, look for this. Uh, this is a couple of bucks at the local hardware store and there's other gaskets in there so you might need them for your house or your apartment or whatever but yeah it comes with red rubber, black rubber, cork rubber, just a couple of bucks. So we've got that covered now. So what is next for the machine? I'm going to be installing a math coprocessor, a real-time clock, and the XT IDE CF card adapter that will be permanently in this machine. So let me adjust the camera and we'll show you those parts. Here are the items I will be installing in my Tandy 1000 today. First is going to be this XT to IDE compact flash hard drive adapter. I will put a link in the description where you can get the Gerber files for this and have one made yourself, or you can buy a pre-built one. It's got nice instructions on the back for all the different dip switch settings and things. And I've got a two gig SD card that I've already prepped installed there. After I get that installed, I will then do some benchmarks on the machine without the Mathco processor. And then after we get those benchmarks, we will install the Mathco processor that I picked up. And this came from eBay. I can give you a link to that auction. Don't know if we'll still have any at the time of recording, but there it is up close and personal so you can see that. After installing the Mathco processor, We'll run the benchmarks again using Check It and see how much faster the math processing is on the machine. 
Then I will install the real-time clock board that I picked up from a seller in Australia. And I'll put a link to this board in the description as well. It uses a CR1632 battery that will go right there, which I have right here. Spared no expense, went with the Energizer 1632. I think I paid $4 US for this battery. Probably could have got it cheaper online, but things are taking forever within the US as well as out of country. So anyway, yeah, Energizer 1632 lithium battery. So let's get things installed in the machine. All right, let's get the hard drive board installed. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the slot right here. Tighten up the screw to lock that into place. All right, that is installed. Now let's hook up the monitor and plug in the keyboard and do some benchmarks with Check It. All right, let's turn on the machine. 768K of memory, which we did in uh, part one. Booting up, so that's showing that my compact flash image is working well. So let's go to my utilities folder. Let's go to check it three. Check it. So we got check it up. As you can see, no math coprocessor is present currently. So let's go ahead and get a benchmark on the system as it sits. Pretty much stock other than adding the 128K of memory for video. So check it is doing its tests. And basically, it's going to compare this machine to a standard XT machine. So it's almost done here. So you can see uh, right here, XT speed, the current speed of the machine or the processor. For math, XT and the stock Tandy 1000 TX is faster even without a math coprocessor, so it'll be interesting to see what these specs are once I put in the math coprocessor. So let's go ahead and do that next, but let's uh, exit out of here. I'll turn off the machine and we'll get that math coprocessor installed. We're currently in handheld mode. I've already gone ahead and installed the math coprocessor. You can see that right there. I tried to get it on camera installing that and uh, my hands and my big head were just in the way so no video of me installing it but it's pretty straightforward it was already socketed put it in there you can see it right there so now we're going to go back to tripod mode and run check it again and see the speed increase for math let's go ahead and turn the machine back on And the power supply fan is so loud in these power supplies, I'll need to look into doing something with that in the future. Alright, so we booted up. Let's go ahead and go back into my utilities folder. Check it three. Check it. Alright, you can now see it's got the math coprocessor installed. So that is a good sign. Let's go ahead and run the benchmarks again and see what it comes up with for the math speed. It's almost done running the uh, tests on the math coprocessor. Whoa! So of course the CPU speed is going to stay the same, but check out the math coprocessor. 
before it was over here and now it's way over here it was stock without a math coprocessor the machine was four times faster with math than a stock XT and now with the math coprocessor it's 50 times faster that's crazy I'm ready to do some calculations math and spreadsheets and we're also going to need to check out SimCity, but I got to get a version of SimCity that I can get to run on this machine. All right, next, let's put in the uh, real-time clock. Let's go ahead and escape out here. All proper like. We'll turn off the machine. Next, we'll be doing the real-time clock. We are back in handheld mode. I have got the battery, the CR1632, installed into the real-time clock. Next, I need to pull out one of the BIOS chips, and on the Tandy 1000TX, there are two. Right here is the odd, right here is the even, and my understanding is the real-time clock could go under either one, but I'm going to put it under the uh, even one here, just to give it some room to breathe because this one's pretty close to the uh, floppy enclosure. So let me grab my handy dandy chip puller, get this chip out, put it in here in this socket and then get it installed. I've got the real-time clock installed as well as the uh, BIOS chip. Let's get in there close there so you can see it. Everything looks good. It's well seated. Now to put the camera back on the tripod and fire this up and make sure everything still works after putting that in. Then set the date and time. Moment of truth. Powering up the machine now that the real-time clock is installed. Make sure nothing smokes and it's working. Power up the machine. We can see the uh, memory. Here the floppy seek. Looks like everything is good. Got the C prompt. Let's go ahead and put in the date. At the time of recording this clip, it is June 16th, 2021. I'm not sure what time it is right now, so we're just gonna leave the time what it is, which is nothing. <laughs> Default, so I do need to type in a command here to tell the DOS clock to send it over to the real-time clock. That is S-M-W-C-L-O-C-K space C. Okay, that shot it over to the real-time clock. Next, we need to enable this in my autoexec.bat. And I've already got that in here commented out, but we'll just remove the comments. You'll also notice that I've got the mouse driver commented out because I don't have a mouse hooked up at the moment. That is okay. Go ahead and exit, save yes. Let's go ahead and reboot the machine and it should automatically set the date when it's rebooted. Let's see what happens. Should work, pretty straightforward. And there it is down at the bottom, right here. Wednesday, June 16th, 2021. So the real-time clock is working, which is awesome. At this time, I'd like to give a quick shout out to my patrons, the people that support me on Patreon, www.patreon.com forward slash geek with social skills. There is a link in my description for that. And what else can I show you without making this video too much longer? Um, I've been working on building out my games collection for this machine, and I've loaded up direct access for a menuing system, so we'll go ahead and bring that up. And there's that. We'll uh, turn the light down a little bit. Tandy 1000 TX. Greetings, Professor Falcon. Shall we play a game? And I've got a few categories. I've got Sierra Online, Infocom, the Tandy Bear Christmas demo, and then a separate games folder there. 
you go into Sierra, you can see what I've got in there so far. And we'll go into the Infocom. And we'll go into Games. And as time goes on, I'm going to continue building this out, get everything working really smooth and nice, and start showcasing my computer, this Tandy 1000 TX, on my channel. So again, I want to thank, uh, thank you to Ron from Ron's Computer Videos. I want to give a thank you to my friend Nathan, my friend Jared, and everybody else that has helped me make this machine what it is to date. Thank you for watching. If you like it, this video, thumbs up would be great. If you don't like it, click thumbs down twice. Be safe out there. We'll see you in the next video.